Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh everyone, Jum'a Mubarak and welcome to this week's Friday Gems where we will be listening to the recitation of Surat Al-Kaf by Ustad Sinan Hafiz and as well listening to a reflection on Surat Al-Kaf by Sheikh Ubaidullah Evans and uh, having a Friday lesson by Sheikh Ubaidullah Evans on the topic of uh, Ghazali's Four Steps to God, the Believer's Journey. Uh, we thank you all for being here with us on this blessed day. We have shared this flyer on our social media. If you want to reshare it on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, so that more people uh, come and join us for this uh, amazing event, inshallah. Uh, if you don't know who we are by now at Celebrate Mercy, we are a nonprofit organization, and our mission is to teach Prophet Muhammad's life and character through our words and through our actions to Muslims and friends of other faiths. And we do this through our webinars, through social media, through events, through trips, and as well through our campaigns. So through our words and through our actions. We started uh, 12 years ago and we've had many campaigns, you know, the actions that we talked about addressing many, uh, you know, national and international crises, raising funds for friends of other faiths. And, uh, you know, these things have gotten uh, national coverage as well. Um, you know, so we really try to be a force of good in the world uh, for both Muslims and non-Muslims. And we've had uh, many previous events uh, prior to COVID, many weekend retreats, conferences, uh, seminars, mashallah. And since COVID, we've had our weekly webinars, the Friday gems that you are tuned into now, uh, mashallah, every week. Uh, and as well, we've had virtual conferences uh, about a variety of topics uh, from esteemed speakers with thousands and thousands of uh, viewers, uh, mashallah. And as well, we've had online courses about the Quran, about the Prophet, about Black Lives Around the Messenger, about Surah Al-Mulk, and uh, we've even started having children's series. Uh, mashallah, we had our third children's series this past Dhul Hijjah. Uh, since COVID, we've had you know over a thousand hours of new content, uh, over almost 300,000 hours of content viewed, over 500 webinars, many virtual courses, over a million dollars raised, for relief projects and eight online campaigns. And as well in Dhul Hijjah, you know, uh, we are still in the days of Dhul Hijjah, but we have finished the first 10 days, the most 10 uh, blessed days uh, of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And in these 10 blessed days, uh, through the Qurbanis that you all ordered, uh, we fed 10,000 refugees in Mecca, mashallah, and we raised over $25,000 to gift books about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam two Muslims in prison. We had 1,500 children register for our first ever Hajj at Home virtual kids camp. And they also received the Hajj workbook, which uh, our team member Danielle worked so hard on. And as well, we've, we hosted our very first uh, virtual community of Dar on Zoom. So having the Celebrate Mercy community gather together uh, on Zoom with our teachers and you know being able to connect all together, mashallah. And as well, we had 32 live webinars in these 10 days, which were viewed for nearly 9,000 uh, hours. So we hope you enjoyed our programming in those, uh, you know, blessed 10 days. And if you enjoyed it, uh, consider supporting us by giving a one-time donation or becoming a monthly donor uh, by going to celebratemercy.com slash donate, inshallah, as we run uh, based on your donations. I want to let you all know about today's Friday giveaway. Uh, the deadline for this giveaway is next Thursday, Thursday, July 21st at 5 p.m. Eastern. So we will announce the winner for this giveaway in next week's Friday Gems. And what is uh, the giveaway this week? It's a beautiful Aital Kursi calligraphy wall art. So it's a beautiful precision reprint of the Aital Kursi, uh, which is verse 255 of Surat al so if you want to win this a beautiful calligraphy wall art, uh, simply go to celebratemercy.com slash giveaway to enter the giveaway and maybe uh, be chosen for this beautiful uh, you know, art piece. And I was uh, telling you all earlier about the amount that we raised for sharing the Prophet Wasallam in prisons. We're at 38% uh, of our goal now. Uh, so if you could donate to our campaign by going to celebratemercy.com slash prisons, this is phase three of our campaign to print and distribute the books uh, Al-Shamal al muhammadiyah to uh, 
to inmates in prisons in America and uh, around the world. We've distributed uh, over 1,250 copies to inmates in the US and UK so far, and we keep getting requests for more and more of these publications. So we are hoping to print another 2,000 copies in the next uh, you know, couple of months, inshallah, and distribute them uh, in Rabi al Awa. So please consider uh, supporting this uh, you know, deeply needed and beneficial cause by going to celebratemercy.com slash prisons. Uh, and as well, uh, I'm not sure why, okay. And as well, we're having a live online raffle today for our second Dohija contest. So we had our first raffle, you know, in one of the final nights, actually uh, during our virtual iftar uh, at night. Uh, and now we are having our second contest raffle uh, near the end of this program after the khutbah, inshallah, where we will choose an Umrah winner and two winners of $500 cash prizes live uh, near the end of this program. So stay tuned and inshallah, uh, maybe the winners can also join us live backstage and you can see their immediate reaction. Let's raise our hands now uh, for dua for our webinar sponsor, an anonymous sister whose dua was, Oh Allah, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shine his guiding light on me, my family and his entire ummah. I pray he grants my children and the ummah internal and external peace. I pray he forgives the entire ummah for all of our sins and shortcomings. I pray that Allah grants my children and everyone looking for a spouse, righteous spouses and righteous children. Ya Allah, grant us your mercy and give us relief. Purify our, our inner affairs and be our protector against every trial affecting us now and those of tomorrow. Grant us total shifa from our ailments. Amin, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Uh, please make dua for this uh, beautiful sister's uh, dua and her entire family. And as well, uh, we wanted to make dua for uh, a longtime viewer and supporter of Celebrate Mercy. I got this news right before, uh, you know, going live that uh, this longtime viewer and supporter has been struggling with cancer for many years. And now she has been hospitalized. And the doctors uh, are saying that she does not have uh, long left. So she's hospitalized currently and she's in a critical com uh, condition. She is in her 40s from New Jersey. So please let's make the offer her that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heals her heart, her body and her soul and grants her complete and immediate healing. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide her every breath in this world towards him and may she be blessed with the highest levels of genital firdos upon her passing. Please make the offer the sister that she can, inshallah, recover and uh, be released from the hospital. And if you would like to sponsor a Friday Gems, if you would like to have your own personalized du'as on a slide for everyone who is watching to make du'a for you throughout the program and after the program, uh, you can email info at celebratemercy.com and we will have a slide with your du'as for everyone who is watching to make du'a for you, inshallah. And you can, uh, you know, benefit us as we benefit you through our du'as. And now with our, without further ado, we'll go to the recitation portion of today is, today's program. And, uh, you know, why do we read Surah Al-Kaf on Fridays? We read this hadith every week to get a refresher on why we read the surah. Our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, for the person who recites Surah Al-Kaf on Fridays, a light will appear for him from below the throne as high as the skies. This light will help him in the darkness of the day of resurrection and all the sins which he may have committed from the last Friday till this Friday will be forgiven. So we pray for this light, for this forgiveness on this blessed, blessed day of Jum'ah. And before we begin with the recitation, please share this link with your friends and family on social media, celebratemercy.com slash Friday. Since our prophet also said, he who directs others to a good deed is as the one who did it. So you will get the rewards and benefits of inviting your friends to this gathering where we, we are reciting Surah Al-Kaf and doing reflection on it on this blessed day, inshallah. Uh, this is today's program. We are starting the recitation soon, followed by a reflection by Shaykh Ubaidullah Evans and a lesson and Q&A as well. And now without further ado, I'm going to... Uh, introduce our reciter on this blessed Friday, Ustad Sinan Hafiz. Sinan Hafiz was born and raised in the UAE and has loved the Quran since he was four years old. He enjoys reciting the Quran and spreading the recitation, praying for hearts to soften by the words of Allah. He has a master's in business administration and he is currently a senior project manager in the pharma biotech industry. 
without further ado, I'll uh, bring him to the stage, uh, Ustad Sanan. Uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sister Mutahara. Jazakumullah khair. Let me start first with asking Allah, O oh Allah, the Lord of the mankind, Ya Allah, remove the affliction, cure, for you are the one who cures. There is no cure but yours, a cure that leaves behind no trace of sickness, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, bless our sister with shifa and afia awun and all our beloved sisters and brothers in Islam, Ya Allah. Let's start direct our hearts and minds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let's start the recitation of Surah Al-Kahf in this blessed day. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. A'udhu billahi s-sami'i l-alimi min ash-shaytani r-rajimi bismillahir rahmanir rahim. الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدنه ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات ويبشر المؤمنين ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا حسنا ما كفين فيه أبدا وينذر الذين قالوا اتخذ الله ولدا ما لهم به من علم ولا لآبائهم كبرت كلمة تخرج من أفواههم إن يقولون إلا كذبا فلعلك باخع نفسك على آثارهم إن لم يؤمنوا إن لم يؤمنوا بهذا الحديث أسفا إنا جعلنا ما على الأرض زينة لها لنبلوهم أيهم أحسن عملا وإنا لجاعلون ما عليها صعيدا جرزا أم حسبت أن أصحاب الكهف والرقيم كانوا من آياتنا عجبا إذ أوى الفتية إلى الكهف فقالوا ربنا فقالوا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا فضربنا على آذانهم في الكهف سنين عددا ثم بعثناهم لنعلم أي الحزبين أحصى لما لبثوا أمدا نحن نقص عليك نبأهم بالحق إنهم فتية آمنوا بربهم وزدناهم هدى وربطنا على قلوبهم إذ قاموا فقالوا ربنا رب السماوات والأرض لن ندعو من دونه إلها لقد قلنا إذا شططا هؤلاء قومنا اتخذوا من دونه آلهة لولا لولا يأتون عليهم بسلطان بين فمن أظلم ممن افترى على الله كذبا وإذ اعتزلتموهم وما يعبدون إلا الله فأهو إلى الكهف ينشر لكم ربكم ينشر لكم ربكم من رحمته ويهيئ لكم من أمركم مرفقا 
وترى الشمس إذا طلعت تزاور عن كهفهم ذات اليمين وإذا غربت تقرضهم ذات الشمال وهم في فجوة منه ذلك من آيات الله من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وتحسبهم أيقاظا وهم رقود ونقلبهم ذات اليمين وذات الشمال وكلبهم باسط ذراعيه بالوصيد لو اطلعت عليهم لوليت منهم فرارا ولملئت منهم رعبا وكذلك بعثناهم ليتساءلوا بينهم وكذلك بعثناهم ليتساءلوا بينهم قال قائل منهم كم لبثتم قالوا لبثنا يوما أو بعض يوم قالوا ربكم أعلم بما لبثتم فبعثوا أحدكم بورقكم هذه إلى المدينة فلينظر أيها أزكى طعاما فليأتكم برزق منه وليتلطف ولا يشعرن بكم أحدا إنهم إن يظهروا عليكم يرجموكم أو يعيدوكم في ملتهم ولن تفلحوا إذا أبدا وكذلك أعثرنا عليهم ليعلموا أن وعد الله حق وأن الساعة لا ريب فيها إذ يتنازعون بينهم أمرهم فقالوا ابنوا عليهم بنيانا ربهم أعلم بهم قال الذين غلبوا على أمرهم لنتخذن عليهم مسجدا سيقولون ثلاثة رابعهم كلبهم ويقولون خمسة سادسهم كلبهم رجما بالغيب ويقولون سبعة وثامنهم كلبهم قل ربي أعلم بعدتهم ما يعلمهم إلا قليل فلا تمار فيهم إلا مراء ظاهرا ولا تستفت فيهم منهم أحدا ولا تقولن لشيء إني فاعل ذلك غدا إلا أن يشاء الله واذكر ربك إذا نسيت وقل عسى أن يهدي لربي لأقرب من هذا رشدا ولبثوا في كهفهم ثلاثمائة سنين وازدادوا تسعا قل الله أعلم بما لبثوا له غيب السماوات والأرض أبصر به وأسمع ما لهم من دونه من ولي ولا يشرك في حكمه أحدا واتل ما أوحي إليك من كتاب ربك لا مبدل لكلماته ولن تجد من دونه ملتحادا واصبر نفسك مع الذين يدعون ربهم بالغداة والعشي يريدون وجهه ولا تعد عيناك عنهم تريد زينة الحياة الدنيا ولا تطع من أوفلنا قلبه عن ذكرنا واتبع هواه 
واتبع هواه وكان أمره فرطا وقل الحق من ربكم فمن شاء فليؤمن ومن شاء فليكفر إنا أعتدنا للظالمين نارا أحاط بهم سرادقها وإن يستغيثوا يغاثوا بماء كالمهل يشوي الوجوه بئس الشراب وساءت مرتفقا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات إنا لا نضيع أجر من أحسن عملا أولئك لهم جنات عدن تجري من تحتها تجري من تحتهم الأنهار يحلون فيها يحلون فيها من أساور من ذهب و يحلون فيها من أساور من ذهب ويلبسون ثيابا خضرا ويلبسون ثيابا خضرا من سندس وإستبرق متكئين فيها على الأرائك نعم الثواب وحسنة مرتفقا واضرب لهم مثل الرجلين جعلنا لأحدهما جنتين من أعناب وحففناهما بنخل وحففناهما بنخل وجعلنا بينهما زرعا كلتا الجنتين آتت أكلها ولم تظلم منه شيئا وفجرنا خلالهما نهرا وكان له ثمر فقال لصاحبه وهو يحاوره أنا أكثر منك مالا وأعز نفرا ودخل جنته وهو ظالم لنفسه قال ما أظن أن تبيد هذه أبدا وما أظن الساعة قائمة ولئن رددت إلى ربي لأجدن خيرا منها منقلبا قال له صاحبه وهو يحاوره أكفرت بالذي خلقك من تراب أكفرت بالذي خلقك من تراب ثم من نطفة ثم سواك رجلا لكن هو الله ربي ولا أشرك بربي أحدا ولولا إذ دخلت جنتك قلت ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله إن ترني أنا أقل منك مالا وولدا فعسى ربي فعسى ربي أن يؤتيني خيرا من جنتك ويرسل عليها حسبانا من السماء فتصبح فتصبح صعيدا زلقا أو يصبح ماؤها غورا فلن تستطيع له طلبا وأحيط بثمره فأصبح يقلب كفيه على ما أنفق فيها وهي خاوية على عروشها ويقول يا ليتني لم أشرك بربي أحدا ولم تكن له فئة ينصرونه من دون الله وما كان منتصرا هنالك الولاية لله الحق 
هو خير ثوابا وخير عقبا واضرب لهم مثل الحياة الدنيا كما إن أنزلناه من السماء فاختلط به نبات الأرض فأصبح فأصبح هشيما تذروه الرياح وكان الله على كل شيء مقتدرا المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا والباقيات الصالحات خير خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا ويوم نسير الجبال وترى الأرض بارزة وحشرناهم فلم نغادر منهم أحدا وعرضوا على ربك صفا لقد جئتمونا كما خلقناكم أول مرة بل زعمتم أن لن نجعل لكم موعدا ووضع الكتاب فترى المجرمين مشفقين مما فيه ويقولون ويقولون يا ويلتنا ما لهذا الكتاب لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرا ولا يظلم ربك أحدا وإذ قلنا للملائكة اسجدوا لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبريس كان من الجن ففسق عن أمر ربه أفتتخذونه وذريته أولياء من دوني وهم لكم عدو بئس للظالمين بدلا ما أشهدتهم خلق السماوات والأرض ولا خلق أنفسهم وما كنت متخذ المضلين عضدا ويوم يقول نادوا شركائي الذين زعمتم فدعوهم فلم يستجيبوا لهم فلم يستجيبوا لهم وجعلنا بينهم موبقا ورأى المجرمون النار فظنوا أنهم مواقعوها ولم يجدوا عنها مصرفا ولقد صرفنا في هذا القرآن للناس من كل مثل وكان الإنسان أكثر شيء جدلا وما منع الناس أن يؤمنوا إذ جاءهم الهدى ويستغفروا ربهم ويستغفروا ربهم إلا أن تأتيهم سنة الأولين أو يأتيهم العذاب قبلا وما نرسل المرسلين إلا مبشرين ومنذرين ويجادل الذين كفروا بالباطل ليدحضوا به الحق واتخذوا آياتي وما أنذروا هزوا ومن أظلم ممن ذكر بآيات ربه فأعرض عنها ونسي ما قدمت يداه إنا جعلنا على قلوبهم أكنة أن يفقهوه وفي آذانهم وقرا وإن تدعهم إلى الهدى فلن يهتدوا إذا أبدا وربك الغفور ذو الرحمة لو يؤاخذهم بما كسبوا لعجل لهم العذاب بل لهم موعد لن يجدوا من دونه موئلا وتلك القرى أهلكناهم لما ظلموا لما ظلموا وجعلنا لمهلكهم موعدا 
وإذ قال موسى لفتاه لا أبرح حتى أبلغ مجمع البحرين أو أمضي حقوبا فلما بلغا مجمع بينهما نسيا حوتهما فاتخذ سبيله في البحر سربا فلما جاوزا قال لفتاه آتنا غدا أنا لقد لقينا لقد لقينا من سفرنا هذا نصابا قال أرأيت إذ أوينا إلى الصخرة فإني نسيت الحوت وما أنسانيه إلا الشيطان أن أذكره واتخذ سبيله في البحر عجبا قال ذلك ما كنا نبغ فارتدا على آثارهما قصصا فوجد عبدا من عبادنا آتيناه رحمة من عندنا وعلمناه وعلمناه من لدنا علما قال له موسى هل أتبعك على أن تعلمني مما علمت رشدا قال إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا وكيف تصبر على ما لم تحط به خبرا قال ستجدني إن شاء الله صابرا ولا أعصي لك أمرا قال فإن اتبعتني فلا تسألني عن شيء حتى أحدث لك منه ذكرا فانطلقا حتى إذا ركبا في السفينة خرقها قال أخرقتها لتغرق أهلها لقد جئت شيئا إمرا قال ألم أقل إنك لن تستطيع معي صدرا قال لا تؤاخذني بما نسيت ولا ترهقني من أمري عسرا فانطلقا حتى إذا لقيا غلاما فقتله قال أقتلت نفسا زكية بغير نفس لقد جئت شيئا نكرا قال ألم أقل لك إنك لن تستطيع معي صدرا قال إن سألتك عن شيء بعدها فلا تصاحبني قد بلغت من لدني عذرا فانطلقا حتى إذا أتيا أهل قرية استطعما أهلها فأبوا فأبوا أن يضيفوهما فوجدا فيها جدارا يريد أن ينقض فأقامه قال لو شئت لاتخذت عليه أجرا قال هذا فراق بيني وبينك سأنبئك بتأويل ما لم تستطع عليه صبرا أما السفينة فكانت لمساكين يعملون في البحر فأردت أن أعيبها وكان وراءهم وكان وراءهم ملك يأخذ كل سفينة غصبا وأما الغلام فكان أبواه مؤمنين فخشينا فخشينا أن يرهقهما طغيانا وكفرا فأردنا أن يبدلهما ربهما خيرا منه زكاة وأقرب رحما 
وأما الجدار فكان لغلامين يتيمين في المدينة وكان تحته كنز لهما وكان أبوهما صالحا فأراد ربك أن يبلغا أشدهما ويستخرجا كنزهما رحمة من ربك وما فعلته عن أمري ذلك تأويل ما لم تسطع عليه صبرا ويسألونك عن ذي القرنين قل سأتلو عليكم منه ذكرا إنا مكنا له في الأرض وآتيناه من كل شيء سببا فأتبع سببا حتى إذا بلغ مغرب الشمس وجدها تغرب في عين حمئة ووجد عندها قوما قلنا يا ذا القرنين إما أن تعذب وإما أن تتخذ فيهم حسنا قال أما من ظلم فسوف نعذبه ثم يرد إلى ربه فيعذبه عذابا نكرا وأما من آمن وعمل صالحا فله جزاء للحسنى وسنقول له من أمرنا يسرا ثم أتبع سببا إذا بلغ مطلع الشمس وجدها تطلع على قوم لم نجعل لهم من دونها سترا كذلك وقد أحطنا بما لديه خبرا ثم أتبع سببا حتى إذا بلغ بين السدين وجد من دونهما قوما لا يكادون لا يكادون يفقهون قولا قالوا يا ذا القرنين إن يأجوج ومأجوج مفسدون في الأرض فهل نجعل لك خرجا فهل نجعل لك خرجا على أن تجعل بيننا وبينهم سدا قال ما مكني فيه ربي خير فأعينوني بقوة أجعل بينكم وبينهم ردما آتوني زبر الحديد حتى إذا ساوى بين الصدفين قال انفخوا حتى إذا جعله نارا قال آتوني أفرغ عليه قطرا فما استطاعوا أن يظهروه وما استطاعوا له نقبا قال هذا رحمة من ربي فإذا جاء وعد ربي جعله دكاء وكان وعد ربي حقا وكان وعد ربي حقا وتركنا بعضهم يومئذ يموج في بعض ونفخ في الصور فجمعناهم جمعا وعرضنا جهنم يومئذ للكافرين عرضا الذين كانت أعينهم في غطاء عن ذكري وكانوا وكانوا لا يستطيعون سمعا أفحسب الذين كفروا أن يتخذوا عبادي من دوني أولياء إنا أعتدنا جهنم للكافرين نزلا قل هل ننبئكم بالأخسرين أعمالا 
الذين ضل سعيهم في الحياة الدنيا وهم يحسبون وهم يحسبون أنهم يحسنون صنعا أولئك أولئك الذين كفروا بآيات ربهم ولقائه فحبطت أعمالهم فحبطت أعمالهم فلا نقيم لهم يوم القيامة وزنا ذلك جزاء كفروا بما كفروا واتخذوا آياتي ورسلي هزوا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها حولا قل لو كان البحر مدادا قل لو كان البحر مدادا لكلمات ربي لنفد البحر لنفد البحر قبل أن تنفد كلمات ربي ولو جئنا بمثله مددا قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا آمنت بالله صدق الله العظيم Jazakallah khairan Ustad Sinan Hafiz for that beautiful recitation and mashallah we all benefited uh, greatly and uh, I wanted to share some comment at the beginning of the program uh, Sister Khadija had said that she's looking forward to uh, hearing your recite since your voice is so uh, beautiful mashallah and, and we kept getting comments of uh, what a beautiful recitation uh, what a beautiful and, and peaceful recitation mashallah so jazakallah khairan for wayyakum, wayyakum. sharing Jazakumullah khair. keep us in your dua barakallahu feekum inshallah see you soon bi-idhnillah and uh, please convey my greetings to our ustad and beloved teacher ustad ubaidullah events mashallah so blessed to be with him on the same platform the same day mashallah barakallahu feeh and may Allah benefit us from him bi-idhnillah Ameen. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Wa iyaakum. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You are just listening to the beautiful recitation of Ustad Sinan Hafiz. You can continue, keep up with his recitations by following him on YouTube and on Twitter uh, at Sinan Hafiz, uh, inshallah. If you enjoyed this beautiful recitation, give this video a like right now so that more people get recommended these videos and they benefit from them. And if you have not subscribed or turned on the notification bell yet, uh, definitely do so so that you never miss a video from us. And as well, I want to say sharing is khaving. Uh, we have this uh, posted on our social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. The flyer is live. So if you want to share to let your friends and family know uh, to join our beautiful program, we just listened to Suratul Kaf. And next up, we have the Suratul Kaf Reflection by Sheikh Ubaidullah Evans, and as well, a lesson and a Q&A uh, coming up. But before that, I wanted to let you all know about this opportunity to learn Quranic Arabic with Fawakih Institute. It's a 15-month journey starting in September 2022 until December 2023, where you can learn two levels 
of Quranic Arabic and possibly increase your understanding of the Quran uh, by 30%. And uh, because you're a Celebrate Mercy viewer, you get a $600 discount here. Uh, you can use the code CMercy25 or go to fawakeh.org slash CMercy uh, to get your discount and sign up and learn Quranic Arabic, inshallah, if you are interested. And as well, this is a reminder about our Share the Prophets in uh, Prison a campaign uh, where we print the book Shamal al muhammadiyah the descriptions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and uh, we uh, print and distribute them to inmates in prisons. We've printed and distributed 1,250 books so far to prisoners in the U.S. and the U.K. We're hoping to uh, print another 2,000 copies in the next couple of months and send them out in Rabi al Awal, in, inshallah. And you all supported in, in Dhul Hijjah and helped us raise 38% of our goal. But please uh, keep donating uh, and keep supporting us and keep sharing this, uh, you know, uh, Shama'il book endowment fund so that we can continuously uh, continue to print and distribute and uh, send these books to inmates who are messaging us regularly, who we are in contact with um, that, you know, are in need of these books. So go to celebratemercy.com slash prisons to support this initiative, inshallah. And as well, I wanted to let you all know that we're going to do a live online raffle today at near the end of the program, just before the Q&A. Uh, so in around an hour, inshallah, we'll do the live online raffle for an Umrah trip and two $500 cash prizes for our second Dhul Hijjah contest, which wrapped up on the day of Eid, mashallah. So stay tuned for that. And now we are moving on to the reflection portion of Surah Al-Kaf by Sheikh Ubaidullah Evans. Sheikh Ubaidullah Evans is the first scholar in residence at American Learning Institute for Muslims. He converted to Islam while in high school, and upon conversion, Sheikh Ubaidullah began studying some of the foundational books of Islam under the private tutelage of local scholars while simultaneously pursuing a degree in journalism from Columbia. Since then, he has studied at Chicagoland Institute of Islamic Education in Tarim, Yemen, and at Al Azhar University in Cairo, Egypt. Sheikh Obeidullah also teaches with Tatlib Collective and the Inner City Muslim Action Network. So we're very blessed to have Sheikh Obeidullah joining us today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Mutahira, how are you? Well, okay. All good, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Allah. Thank you for all of your hard work on behalf of our community. May Allah reward you reward your family and make your affairs easy insha'Allah um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim inna alhamda lillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa nasta'hdi wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina faman yahdihi allahu falamudillalah wa min yudlil falahadiyala wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika la I want to start by mentioning how much of an honor and how privileged I feel to be included among an assembly of people taking time out of what I presume is a busy Friday to remember Allah, to spend time engaging the book of Allah and doing so iltimasan doing so seeking reward from Allah. So just to be included among this assembly, just to be a member of this collective, a member of this group, I feel incredibly honored. Um, it is an additional honor to share this platform with uh, my brother Sinan, alhamdulillah. He recites so beautifully. And so, you know, his recitation is so tranquil. It's almost as if, you know, like honey is being rolled off of one of those uh, honey sticks and just depositing into more honey. You know, mashallah, uh, I always enjoy his recitation. We're reflecting on Surah Al-Kaf. And mashallah, this is, I want to say, the fifth or sixth time I've been asked to do Friday Gems. So this time I want to turn my attention to the 54th ayah. If we have that, can we, can we post that ayah? Bismillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلٍ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَلًا 
Allah says, we have surely set forth in this Quran every kind of lesson for people, but humankind is the most argumentative of all beings. You know, this verse is about the miracle of the Quran. Of course, all of the prophets, if you look at our theological definition of a prophet, it is a it is a messenger of God, Mu'ayyid, who is aided, who is supported, bil mu'ajizat, with miracles. It is the miracles that give us the um, surety that this messenger is divinely inspired because the messenger is doing something that only can be attributed to God. In the case of every other uh, prophet, that miracle was something, uh, it was a, a phenomenological reality, which is just a way of saying it was it was adat, but it was within natural phenomena. So if you look at Musa and splitting the Red Sea and his staff becoming a serpent that devoured the staffs of the magicians, if we look at uh, Isa and him giving life to Lazarus after his death, him forming a bird in forming clay into the into the, the the shape of a bird and giving life to that bird, him curing those afflicted with leprosy. These are all great miracles. But if you were not present when Christ raised Lazarus from the death, from, from the dead, if you were not present when Musa split the Red Sea or uh, you know, overcame the magicians of Pharaoh in Pharaoh's court. If you were not present when Ibrahim was saved from a blazing inferno, if you were not present for those miracles, those miracles might not be conclusive in terms of your own experience of faith. The miracle of the Prophet wasallam is the Quran because it is a miracle that can be accessed from his time until the day of judgment by each and every solitary individual. That's the first thing about the ayah. The second thing about this ayah that I think is also very significant is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the compelling nature of the Quran itself, that it contains every kind of lesson, right? The Quran contains stories. The Quran contains, um, you know, uh, glad tidings for the doers of good. The Quran contains warnings for those going down the wrong course. The Quran contains analogies. It contains parables. The Quran contains every kind of lesson. The Quran has not been restricted to one kind of instructive teaching, but rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this teaching, has made this revelation something that can um, serve as definitive proof for every single soul, as long as he or she is sincere. This is the only prerequisite to benefiting from the book of Allah, is that you sincerely want to obey God, that you sincerely desire the path of God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those who jahadu fina, subulana, those who strive in the way of God, God guides those people unto his ways. And he says subul in the plural, right? The Quran is also diverse in its modes of expression. You know, I was once listening to a lecture and somebody present asked uh, the speaker, uh, who was Sheikh um, Abdul Hakim Murad, wouldn't it have been more definitive in terms of proving the existence of God if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran in explicitly scientific language, if the language of the Quran was just scientific and it provided irrefutable scientific proof for the existence of God, wouldn't that have done the job more effectively? And I will never forget, Sheikh Abdul Hakim Murad said, but God does not want a specialized cadre of elites to have access to him, which is what would have happened if the Quran were strictly in the language of, of the natural sciences. But rather, God desires that all people have access to him, the sophisticated and the sophisticated and the simpleton. 
the learned individual and the unlettered individual, right? The urbane city dweller and the rustic rural dweller, all of them should have access to the Quran. All of them should have access to their Lord. All of them should be enriched by revelation. So it is a, a sign of the miraculous nature of the Quran that all of us, in spite of the great diversity of our experiences, our intellects, our cultures, our uh, fields of endeavor, etc., all of us can open the Quran and find great benefit in its teaching. That in and of itself is a miracle. And the fact that the people at the time of the revelation of the Quran, many of them could not deny the other the otherworldly nature of the Quran. In fact, all of them could not deny the otherworldly nature of the Quran. Even those that were not want to uh, attribute the Quran to, uh, to Allah, they said the Prophet ﷺ was being inspired by a jinn. Or, right, they recognize the otherworldly nature of the Quran, right? So, you know, uh, if one is sincere, the Quran is offering him or her an irrefutable um, argument for the existence of God and the necessity of submitting to the path of God. And then at the end of the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَلًا but the human being is most argumentative. You know, I was reading a book once in which somebody was attempting to provide an argument for atheism. And I just said to myself, La ilaha illallah, if you exhausted yourself, and the argument was uh, quite tenuous, the argument was really, really being stretched to the limit of argumentation. And I said, if you worked, half as hard for faith as you appear to be working for disbelief, you would be a friend of God. But what can an insan in jadala? But submission is difficult for human beings. Right? To submit is difficult. It 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 ingratiates us more. It uh, delights us more to make arguments that we know can't be proven but we also know emanate from us, our thinking, our analysis, our critical approaches. This makes us feel um, validated, seen, when the only thing Allah is asking of us is submission. Just sub This revelation is always mentioned as coming down, coming down. Not that we should you know, associate directionality to Allah, but the revelation is coming down because one must be humble to accept it. This is mercy, right? This is mer this is rahma, right? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is mentioned as what? وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ. His God, this is mercy. This is a gift to you, a grant to you, a bestowal to you. Your only task is accepting it with the requisite submission with the requisite gratitude, right? And don't be unnecessarily argumentative. The next ayah, inshallah. وَمَا مَنَعَ النَّاسَ أَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا إِذْ جَاءَهُمُ الْهُدَى وَيَسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّهُمْ إِلَّا أَنْ تَأْتِيَهُمْ سُنَّةُ الْأَوَّلِينَ أَوْ يَأْتِيَهُمُ الْعَذَابُ قُبُلَا And Allah says, and nothing prevents people from believing when guidance comes to them and from seeking their Lord's forgiveness, except their demand, right? To meet the same fate of earlier deniers or that the torment would confront them face to face. You know, subhanAllah, the beginning of this ayah is really a very interesting Quranic uh, style. What is preventing you? Like what is stopping you from accepting what should be as clear as the sun at noon on a cloudless day. You know, one of my teachers, he told me, he said, when we attempt to engage people about Allah, we often start with Allah. And this is, of course, something that is, you know, quite controversial. But if we started with mortality, start with our mortality. None of us can deny that. 
After you begin with mortality, then you're thinking about life in a much more um, a much more focused, much more serious way, right? We are living, and as we live, we are choosing how we want to die. What would prevent someone from recognizing that I don't exactly know from whence I came, and I don't exactly know to where I'm going. Allah says, where are you going? But I choose to spend this moment. I choose to spend this, 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 you know, uh, you know, this, you know, uh, flash of a moment that is my life in submission to my Lord. And I will seek his forgiveness. And to seek the forgiveness of their Lord. You know, this ayah, mashallah, Allah doesn't mention in this ayah, istiqama, that like, what would prevent people from believing and being upright? No, what would prevent people from believing? And of course, because they will inevitably fall into errors, mistakes, seeking forgiveness from Allah. Allah does not demand perfection from us. Allah demands accountability from us. You see, when we make tawbah to Allah, when we ask Allah's forgiveness, we are, are expressing a willingness to hold ourselves accountable. This is all Allah is asking you know, of you, right? That you would believe and that you would seek his forgiveness. And then he mentions, or, right, illa an ta'tiyahum sunnatul awaleen. Or are you choosing an alternate path? Do you want something different? Because the only alternative to submission to Allah is perdition, is destruction, right? This is what befell the people before us. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Siru fil ard, right? Travel through the earth. You know, many of us have taken to travel as a uh, leisurely pastime, but travel also contains great spiritual significance that we would travel and look at the civilizations of times past and we should reflect that in the same way that we feel invincible in the same way that we are quite proud of our civilizational achievements in the same way that we perhaps arrogate ourselves because of what we've done they used to do the same thing but now they are nowhere to be found. And you are touring their ruins. You're looking at the ruins of those societies, right? Those societies are just chapters in our world civilizations and history books now, right? But they used to be just like you. They used to perhaps have this same uh, arrogance that you have. And in the end, they met God. And the only thing they had was accountability for their deeds and the way they chose to live their lives. Why do you expect anything different to happen to you? No, what befell them will certainly befall us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kullu nafsin maud. Every soul shall taste death. So, you know, uh, no one escapes. You know, uh, Dr. Jackson, hafizullah, may Allah preserve him. You know, he's fond of saying, Two things. Nobody is getting away with anything, right? Allah and his angels are recording and nobody is getting out of here alive. Now, in light of those two realities, you choose wisely how you want to live your life. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أو يأتيهم, أو يأتيهم Or do they have the audacity to brave the torment of God Asking for it, saying we want to see it face to face. That, I mean, just think about that. This is uh, an expression of the limitless, the boundless arrogance that we are capable of. That when the Messenger of Allah is telling the Quraysh about an impending doom that they will face if they don't repent to Allah and mend and salvage their ways. And they're saying to him, bring it on. Let's go. I, I, I want to see it. You know, you say God is going to punish me. Then let him punish me. 
right? Human beings are capable of this kind of arrogance. Even if you weren't firm in your belief, what sense would it make for you to ask the messenger to hasten the punishment? What sense, even if you weren't firm, just the, the humility that dictates saying, well, maybe he could be right. If he could be right, I don't want to say anything that will bring this punishment even more quickly than it's already arriving. But no, these were people that said, no, if, if God is going to punish me, if God is going to uh, chastise me, then let him do it. What are you, what are you saying? You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, you know, in a, uh, an authentic hadith, everybody is rushing. But if most people knew what they were rushing toward, they would slow down. What are you, like, this is something you are eager to experience, the wrath of God? The only people that adequately and appropriately fear God are the knowledgeable among his servants. Those are statements of ignorant people. Yeah, bring it on. If, you, if you're telling me there's some, uh, he, you know, I was watching a, 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 an infomercial that this uh, group of atheists and agnostics put together and Ronald Reagan's son, I forget his name. Um, I forget his name. He's the spokesperson for this group of uh, atheists. And he ended the ad by saying, such and such Reagan, not afraid of burning in hell. <laughs> like, what 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 a what a silly thing to say. What a silly thing to say. As if you have any control over what will become of you when you die. My name is such and such, and I'm not afraid of burning in hell. Now, if he had said the same statement because he believes in God's mercy, or he believes in God's caretaking, right? Even then we might challenge the uh the uh the 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 the, the self-congratulation that accompanies a statement like that but no he's saying none of this is real i don't believe in any of this subhanallah what a silly thing to say right and the last ayah we'll look at 56 bismillah wama nursil al mursalin illa mubashirin wa mundirin and Allah says, we did not, we do not send the messengers except as deliverers of good news and warners. But the disbelievers argue in falsehood, hoping to discredit the truth with it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the purpose of the messengers, all of them, is that they would give us glad tidings and give us warnings. That they would tell, the, you know, that their message to the people that are patiently practicing their faith, enduring hardship, going through the ups and downs of life, and staying faithful, yours will be a generous reward. Yours will be a vast garden of provision and nearness to your Lord. And then in Allah's mercy, he also sends them to those of us that are astray, those of us that have lost the path, telling us, get yourself together. Lazim, tajma asham lak. Get yourself together. You weren't created for just sport and play. Life is not just, uh, you know, right? What takhadu ayati wa ma'undiru huzuwa. And making, this is, not, this is not a joke. This is not funny. You were created for very serious ends. And everything you do, you will be held accountable for, right? There isn't a moment of our lives that we spend outside the supervision of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of this will be shown to us again. All of this will be read to us. Our limbs will be made to testify against us. So get yourself together. Give some thought to that. now. Thinking about that shouldn't drive you to this place of, you know, seriousness that does not admit laughter, enjoyment, because that's not the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. But it should 
give you a sense of the seriousness and the gravity of purpose that accompanies human life. Jazakallah uh, khairan, uh, Shaykh Ubaidullah Evans, for that beautiful reflection, really making, you know, those ayat relevant in today's day and age and really contextualizing them to how we act today. And I really liked what you said about, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not wanting us to be perfect, but to be accountable for everything that we do. So mm -hmm. thank you for that um, beautiful reflection. And uh, we look forward to hearing your Friday lesson, inshallah. Inshallah. Right, uh, we're just listening to the beautiful reflections of, of Sheikh Abedullah Evans. You can follow him on Facebook at Abedullah Evans, and you can also learn more about Alim, his uh, program at alimprogram.org, uh, inshallah. And before we go to the uh, Friday lesson by Sheikh Abedullah, I just had uh, a couple announcements. So we'll have uh, Sheikh Abedullah talk about Ghazali's Four Steps to God, the Believer's Journey, coming up next. Uh, and afterwards, we will have uh, him join us on Clubhouse for a 40-minute uh, discussion, inshallah. So if you don't have Clubhouse, you can download it. Go to the App Store, download Clubhouse, and you can go to celebratemercy.com slash room uh, to join the room, inshallah. And as well, a reminder that we're going to do a Friday giveaway uh, next Friday, fr uh, in next week's Friday Gems. The deadline to enter it is next Thursday. So you can go right now to celebratemercy.com slash giveaway. Uh, to win this beautiful Ayatul Kursi calligraphy wall art. So it's a beautiful precision reprint of the Ayatul, uh, Ayatul Kursi. And you can hang it anywhere in your home. Uh, this is a free giveaway. So you can go to celebratemercy.com slash giveaway and, you know, uh, follow the rules. And inshallah, your name might get chosen and you might win this beautiful uh, calligraphy wall art and you can see here uh, it's uh, on the wall it's uh, truly gorgeous so definitely uh, sign up for the giveaway and as well uh, after the Friday lesson we're going to do the online raffle for the Omar trip and two $500 cash prizes for Celebrate Mercy's second Dil Hijjah contest so stay tuned to inshallah uh, see who the winners are and maybe we might get some people joining us live uh, to see their reactions uh, let's raise our hands and do'a for our webinar sponsors, our dear anonymous sister who wanted us all to make du'a and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides his shining light on her and her family and his entire ummah. She said, I pray he grants my children and the ummah internal and external peace. I pray he forgives the entire ummah for, for all of our sins and shortcomings. I pray that Allah grants my children and everyone looking for a spouse, righteous spouses and righteous children. Ya Allah, grant us your mercy and give us relief. Purify our inner affairs and be our protector against every trial affecting us now and those of tomorrow. Grant us total shifa from our ailments. Amin, Ya Rabbal Alameen. And as well, uh, I heard about this before, uh, going live today, our dear anonymous sister who is in her 40s in New Jersey. She is a longtime viewer and supporter of Celebrate Mercy, and she's been struggling with cancer for many years, and she has been hospitalized now. Uh, she's in a you know, critical condition, and the doctors are saying she doesn't have uh, much long left. So we please, uh, let's make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heals her heart, body, and soul, and grants her complete and immediate healing. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide her every breath in this world towards him. And may she be blessed with the highest levels of gentle for dose uh, upon her passing. Please make dua that this sister can recover and be released from the hospital uh, as soon as possible. If you would like to sponsor a Friday Gems uh, webinar and have your personalized du'as up here for everyone who is watching to make dua for you, you can email info at celebratemercy.com, inshallah. And, and now without further ado, we'll go on to our Friday lesson where Sheikh Abidullah will, will talk about uh, four advice, you know, four steps on the way to God uh, that are Imam al-Ghazali's uh, advice from his book, uh, O Son, A Letter to His Student. Uh, we actually have this in our store. It's a, it's a great translation, mashallah. So if you are interested in getting this book, you can go to celebratemercy.com slash O Son, or you can just, uh, you know, go there to read more about it and learn more about this book, inshallah. And as well, afterwards, we will have a Q&A session. So you can post your questions in the comments, uh, in the chat, 
or you can email them to question at celebratemercy.com uh, as you are listening so that inshallah we can have the questions ready for the Q&A session. And a final reminder that after the Friday lesson, uh, immediately after and before the Q&A, we will do the online raffle for the Umrah trip winners and the $500 cash prize winners. And without further ado, I'll uh, reintroduce a Sheikh Abedullah Evans, inshallah. Sheikh Abedullah Evans is the first scholar in residence at American Learning Institute for Muslims, Alim. He converted to Islam while in high school, and upon conversion, he began studying some of the foundational books of Islam under the private tutelage of local scholars, while simultaneously pursuing a degree in journalism from Columbia. Since then, he has studied at Chicagoland Institute of Islamic Education, in Tarim, Yemen, and at Al-Azhar University in Cairo, Egypt. Sheikh Ubaidullah also teaches with the Ta'lif Collective and the Inner City Muslim Action Network. So I thank you for joining us once again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you again, Sister Mutahira, for a very beautiful and very generous um, introduction. Um, she mentioned, mashallah, that we're reading from uh, Ya Ayyuhal Walad, or uh, just not reading from, that would that would be a misstatement, but taking a few lessons from Imam Ghazali's book, uh, Dear Beloved Son, which wasn't actually, it's, it's the, the book is actually a letter that wasn't addressed to his son, but addressed to um, an advanced student um, of Islamic studies who was asking for the Imam to summarize for him the most important aspects of what he learned as a student of Islam. And Imam Ghazali says that if we want to progress spiritually, we want to begin making our way toward Allah. There are four essential steps that none of us can afford to neglect. The first step, he says, اعتقادٌ صحيحٌ Sound belief. Belief that is free of bid'ah. Belief that is free of blameworthy innovation. And, you know, innovation is one of those terms that is uh, bandied about uh, quite, a, quite a bit in our community. Uh, some people have made a practice of using the term too inclusively, right? Everything is bid'ah. This is bid'ah. Th that's bid'ah. And I think that in some segments of our community, the pendulum has swung all the way to the other side, that nothing is bid'ah, right? Where as the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we want to remain balanced. If you find somebody renouncing everything as a heretical innovation, I'm guessing this person does not have a broad, uh, uh, comprehensive understanding of our religion. They said men... The, the, the less knowledge an individual has been given, the more censorious or the more critical they will be, right? The more they see wrong. On the other hand, um, we should know that the bid'a, right? Blameworthy innovation in the religion is not just a legal category. It's also a spiritual category that if one adheres to some uh, you know, innovative practice, something that has been introduced and cloaked in the language, the teachings, and the liturgy of Islam, but doesn't actually belong there, the spiritual problem with that is that they are suggesting that something or someone is a better spiritual guide than Allah and his messenger. Right? If there was a means of getting closer to God, if there was a means of, of exercising our spiritual gifts better than what God has given us, better than the lived example of the Prophet Muhammad, والسلام, then I would be irresponsible if I didn't tell you to keep doing that. You know, it's it's you know, just to give a, a practical kind of everyday example of what I'm what I'm referring to. It's like when you come to someone, and I've experienced this, and you're telling them that they should embrace Islam. And they say, Well, you know, Imam, you know, sister, I'm kind of out here, you know, I'm 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 not really living as I should, but let me get myself together. And after I'm together, after I'm in the right headspace, then I'll come back to to you, and maybe then 
I'll be able to embrace Islam. Well, if there was a means of getting close to God, if there was a means of rectifying your moral condition, if there was a means of cleaning yourself up that was better than what God and his messenger have given you, then I would be irresponsible if I didn't tell you to keep doing that. No, this is the means through which you get yourself together. Bida embodies a similar concept. If there was another way of attaining spiritual realization, if there was a better way of experiencing closeness to God, then you should keep doing that. But of course, there is no better way than what the Prophet Wasallam has given us. And Bida is often motivated by good, sound, sincere intent. It's just that the execution and the application is wrong. You know, once there were three uh, young men and the, the hadith mentions that they were shabab. This is a hadith that is rigorously authenticated. And one of them, you know, in his you know, enthusiasm for Islam, he said, I'm never going to get married. I don't have time for marriage. I'm just going to restrict myself to devotional activity. And another said, I'm going to pray at night and I'm never going to sleep, right? I don't, you know, I'm, I'll take a short nap during the day and I'll spend all of my night in prayer. And then the third of them, uh, he said, uh, I'm going to fast every single day. I'm going to fast every day, not just in the month of Ramadan, not just Mondays and Thursdays, not just the ayam of Tashriq, but I'm going to fast every day. And this was an expression of, you know, their enthusiasm. They were eager about Islam and they wanted to be close to Allah. And when Sayyidah Aisha heard about this, she informed, radiallahu anha, may God be pleased with her. She informed the Prophet, والسلام, and his initial response, men haula. Who are these people? Whoever wants anything other than my sunnah is not of me, is not from me. I love women, right? And I'm a married man. Some days I eat and some days I fast. And at night, sometimes I sleep and sometimes I pray. So even though they thought they were doing something good, as Hafiz Sinan just recited, they thought they were doing something good. The Prophet ﷺ corrected their approach to their spiritual striving, saying, look, this balance path that I've given you, nothing is going to take you to God more quickly than that. Nothing is, nothing is more effective at helping you uh, attain the spiritual heights you seek than what I've given you, right? And if you think that, you've grossly underestimated the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You've grossly underestimated the value of the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The second thing that Imam Ghazali mentions in this series of lessons is tawbah tun nusuh sincere repentance right every spiritual journey of any kind begins with repentance always because re the prerequisite of repentance is accountability recognition you can never repent of a sin you don't recognize right in fact the conditions of toba indicate you cannot repent of a sin you don't feel some remorse about, that you don't feel some uh, uh, sadness at having uh, committed that sin. Now, that remorse shouldn't be despair in God's mercy, right? Well, I tell you, never despair of the mercy of God, but you should recognize that in disobeying God, I missed an opportunity to increase my proximity to him and to through his obedience, right? So sincere repentance. And it's been mentioned uh, many times in many different places that repentance has four essential conditions. The first is nedim, that there is some remorse about the action that was done. Again, not despair, but remorse. The second is that 
one actually cease and desist that whatever it is I was engaged in, as I'm repenting to Allah, I've I've, I've given up that that practice. I've recanted that statement, right? I've stopped doing what it is I'm doing. One cannot claim to repent sincerely just because they're saying astaghfirullah, but perhaps persisting in, in, in the wrong action. Yes, it's a good reminder to say astaghfirullah, right? Maybe somebody's cracking the seal on an alcoholic beverage and he or she is saying astaghfirullah. It's a good practice to say astaghfirullah, but it's not until they discard the beverage that the real istighfar, the real seeking of God's forgiveness has 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 begun, uh, right? The third, I love you too, baby. That's my daughter. <laughs> um, the third condition of repentance is an ya'ida Allah ya'uda ila hadha them abadan. Oh, this is a different. This is a different. This is a different, different thing. We're talking uh, conditions of repentance that one promises never to return. Um, to the sin, right? It makes no difference if you if you are able to um, realize what you promised. It's important that one is willing to make the promise that my intent is to obey God in perpetuity. My intent is to obey God forever. That's my intention. Now, I'm a human being. Perhaps I will falter. Perhaps uh, my weaknesses will overcome me. But my intention at the moment of repentance is to, to obey God perpetually. You know, someone once asked, I believe it was Sheikh al-Sha'rawi, Muhammad Mutawalli al-Sha'rawi, why is it that, you know, a believer is given uh, paradise forever, even though maybe they live 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, like, I mean, subhanAllah, it, it's, it's almost like they were saying what we're getting is not the equivalent of what we're giving. We're giving, you know, uh, it's like 60 years of obedience and we're getting eternal bliss, happiness, nearness to God. He said, well, the goal of the believer is to obey God forever. Right? This is actually the meaning of the hadith of the Prophet. ﷺ. Her intention is better than her action. Right? The intent of the believer is to obey God forever. That if Allah gave them an eternity, they would spend that eternity in worship. They would spend that eternity in a state of obedience. This is their niya, the, the, the jannah that they are given, that fil khulud in eternity is a reflection of that niya. So when we promise to never disobey Allah, <clears throat> We also have to remember to take things one day at a time, right? One day at a time, one day at a time, trying to get from the beginning of the day to the end of the day without displeasing my Lord in a state in which my Lord is pleased with me. However, my intent is to do this every day, right? This is, and then the fourth condition of repentance is that we mend fences, that if we have hurt anyone, if relationships have been damaged, if um, you know uh, feelings have been hurt, we should go to the people that we've hurt with humility, asking their forgiveness, right? Seeking to set things right with them, right? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Avulmu vulumatun yom al qiyamah," that our oppression of other people will be darkness on the day when we meet Allah. And on that day, all of us will want light, right? Those are the, the four conditions of a sincere repentance, right? Um, the third advice of Imam Al-Ghazali is istirba'ul khusum, reconciliation with opponents. You know, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, it, it would be, um, it would be naive of me to suggest that uh, every kind of offense that we've suffered, every kind of wrong that has been uh, um, perpetuated against us, we can just, 
you know, turn our heads and say, I forgive. <clears throat> it's a process. I recognize that. It's a process, especially for those wrongs that were very grave. People that have abused us, people that have harmed us, people that have violated us, people that have taken advantage of our trust, our confidence. It's very difficult. But our goal, not for their sake, but for our own, should be to forgive them. And in uh, reconciling with them and forgiving them, it doesn't mean that things will go back to how they were before the offense. It doesn't mean that, okay, if somebody assaulted me, uh, I'm going to go back to you know uh, casually greeting them and cordially exchanging with them like I used to before they assaulted me. Uh, perhaps not. But I'm trying to get to a place in my heart that when I meet Allah and they meet Allah, I do not want God to punish them. That I find no satisfaction in the idea that this person will be placed in hell. I find no satisfaction in that. And this is the basis of reconciliation. Not that, you know, you know, if you can, if you entered my home as a guest and you stole from me, you know, I want you to re-enter my home. Maybe, right? If we're ambitious. But I just want to make things right with you so that when I die and you die, this is not something that's still between us. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna min lisani hi wayadi. The Muslim is the one from whom other Muslims are safe from their tongue and their hand. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the people of Ihsan, the people of spiritual excellence. And he says, uh, al They restrain their anger. nas, And they forgive people. Uh, one of the implications of being forgiving is that you will inevitably be wronged. People will wrong you. There's, there's, there's no other way to be forgiving except that you get wronged. So when someone wrongs us, we have to see it as, okay, my adherence to the prophetic way is being challenged. My faith in God is being challenged. My magnanimity is being challenged. My generosity of spirit is being challenged, right? And try to, to, the, to, to the best of our capacity. I actually don't believe that we should engage in false forgiveness, just saying it because we're pressured. If we're not ready to say it, we're not ready to say it. But to the best of my capacity, reconciling with people with whom I've had differences in the past. And then the last advice of Imam Ghazali that should uh, accompany our path to Allah is knowledge of the Sharia to the extent that you are able to fulfill your religious obligations, that your individual religious responsibility is something you take it upon yourself to know. And this is, think about the Arkan al-Khamsa, think about the five pillars of Islam, and then think about all of the knowledge you need to make good on your commitment to those five pillars. So you don't have to become a theologian. You don't have to memorize uh, a 1,000 line poem, but you should know who your Lord is and you should know who his messenger is, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? In some very uh, basic ways. And these are points of dogma. I know dogma has become a bad word, astaghfirullah. There's nothing actually bad about it. These are points that you can sit with uh, a good instructor over the course of a weekend. And, okay, you should know this about Allah, 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 you should know this about prophethood, you should know this about prophethood, you should know this about prophethood. Same thing is true of your prayer. Learning how to pray correctly, learning how to prepare for prayer correctly. Same thing is true of fasting. Learning about the month of Ramadan, how to fast, that which invalidates our fast, how to uh, make up for those fasting days that we've missed, etc., we should learn the same thing about zakat. How to pay zakat. This is, you know, if I were to uh, look at the pillars of Islam, I would say this is perhaps the most neglected pillar of Islam, is zakat. When I look at the disparity of wealth um, in our community, 
um, it's I'm, I'm always thinking to myself, you know, zakah was instituted by the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to deal with precisely these kinds of scenarios. So either we are not fulfilling this obligation, or we aren't learning how to do it effectively, right? And it's a, it's our individual responsibility for women and for men to learn how to pay uh, your zakat. And then the same thing is true of hajj. Um, all of us should have an intention to make hajj. And upon making hajj, we should know how to complete the manasik of hajj, how to complete the rites of hajj, right? So those four things Imam Ghazali considers the beginnings of our path to Allah, right? I'tiqadun sahihun, sound belief. And again, don't just think about bid'ah as this legal category that overzealous young men with long beards and short trousers go around saying to everybody, think about bid'ah as having a deep spiritual implication that if I'm adhering or if I'm uh, beholden to some innovative matter in the religion, then I'm essentially saying that someone else can do a better job of guiding me to God than God, which you know is 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 absolutely counterintuitive. Uh, the second advice was tawbatun nusuh, right? Sincere repentance. Uh, the third condition was istirda'ul khusum, reconciliation with opponents, and the fourth condition was. Farda'in, learning that, you know, that, 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 that essential religious knowledge that is needed for you to make good on your commitment to God. You know, brothers and sisters, if you get nothing else out of this, uh, you know, admittedly um, um, uh, not original reminder, I'm sure all of you have heard all of these points before, know that the five pillars of Islam don't represent the height of um, what it means to worship God. The sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, represents the height of what it means to worship God. The five pillars of Islam, these represent your baseline moral commitment to God and to being an ethical, upright person. And in as much as this is representative of my commitment to being a good person, an upright person, leading you know, a God-pleasing life, even at its minimum, then I should be willing to invest um, my time, my energy, um, a little bit of myself into learning how to do that uh, appropriately and properly. أقول إن كل هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين. ما شاء الله جزاك الله خيرا شيخ بيد الله فنس for that beautiful beautiful lesson we had so many comments on the side I can't even share all of them because they're very deep and long so I would encourage you to to read through them now إن شاء الله and uh, we're going to come back for Q&A in, in just a couple minutes, inshallah. But first, I'm going to uh, announce the raffle winners for our Umrah contest. So I'll bring you back in a couple minutes. So like like two minutes? Uh, inshallah, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to share this uh, with you all now. And inshallah, uh, Sister Danielle can message in our uh, in our group to let them know that we are doing the raffle live now so we were just listening to Sheikh Abdullah Evans uh right now and now we're moving on to our online raffle for an Umrah trip and two five hundred dollar cash prizes I hope the uh you know those who participated are watching right now if not I hope they join soon so that they're able to see live who won the Umrah trip and as well the $500 cash prizes. Uh, I wanted to show you all the all those who qualified for our second contest. You can see here the list of all the names, mashallah, and all the money they raised and all the times that their name is in the raffle and some contest statistics. Uh, we raised over $4,700, mashallah, those who participated. There was 40 contestants in total, 29 of them qualified. 
and there is 73 tickets in the raffle with the most raised being Homayan Kabir. Uh, so let's see, uh, we can see here that uh, thanks to the contestants, it was a two day contest on the ninth day and the 10th day of the Hijjah. And on the ninth day, they helped us win uh, first place, the Share the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam campaign, won first place on launch good and got won an extra $10,000 and as well on the uh, second day uh, of the contest, on the day of Eid, uh, we won second place thanks to those who donated and we got an extra $2,500 prize from LaunchGood for this campaign, mashallah. And I just wanted to say that, you know, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he who directs others to a good deed is as the one who did it. So those who, uh, you know, invited and encouraged those to donate to Celebrate Mercy will get the rewards and, and benefits of, you know, bringing them uh, to, uh, you know, donating to this beautiful cause, to giving books to uh, inmates on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that they have this light uh, in, in, the, in the darkness of their, uh, you know, days. And as well, uh, this was a Dohijjah contest. As our Prophet said, there are no days when good deeds are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than during these 10. So everyone who worked so hard to, uh, you know, get uh, people, get their friends and family to be part of the contest, to donate to this cause, uh, your reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You already did the best that you could on these blessed days. And inshallah, uh, the winners of the Umrah trip are with uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever he invites. Uh, we will see live now as well. So now I'm going to uh, share the raffle. So I'll stop the screen and I will share the tab for the Dhulhijjah raffle. So you all can uh, see this here. Uh, okay, perfect. So I'm going to spin. Bismillah rahman rahim uh, I hope everyone is watching and excited to see who won the free Umrah trip with Celebrate Mercy. Bismillah. Everyone make dua for the one who is called. Oh, mashallah, Maher Hussain. Maher Hussain won a free Umrah trip to go to Hajj, to go to Mecca, Medina, or Jerusalem. Oh my God, a congratulations to Maher Hussain uh, for winning this uh, prize. Let's see, Sister Danielle in the back, and let's see if uh, you can get uh, Maher Hussain to join uh, backstage. Uh, otherwise, I'm just gonna go right ahead and uh, I think I'll remove all instances of Maher Hussain and we'll do the raffle again for the $500 cash prizes. So we have $500 cash prizes. We have two of them. So Maher Hussain just won the Omar raffle. And let's see who wins the first $500 cash prize. Bismillah. Let's see. Nada Badawi, Nada Badawi, mashallah, Nada Badawi won the first $500 cash prize uh, from Celebrate Mercy for the second Dhul Hijjah contest. Mashallah, Nada Badawi, maybe you use this uh, for your Umrah trip. Uh, who knows? Let's see who is the next $500 uh, winner for our contest. And I'm not sure, Sister Danielle, if you are sharing the link with the winners, if they are going to join backstage or not. But let's see who won the next $500 cash prize. Bismillah. Let's see. Salahuddin Devon. Salahuddin Devon won the second. $500 cash prize. MashaAllah, thank you all for uh, participating in this Dhul Hijjah contest. Uh, we appreciate all the funds that you helped raise. Uh, I just want to show this uh, again. Let's see. So everyone who participated helped raise $4,700 for Celebrate Mercy, Mahir Hussein won a free Umrah trip with Celebrate Mercy, and two others, MashaAllah, uh, Nada Badawi and Salahuddin Daban, 
won two $500 cash prizes. Uh, I know they've been sent the link, but I don't know if at this time of day, if anyone is watching right now, if anyone uh, is going to join backstage. So uh, we will probably just continue with our uh, you know, Q&A and uh, the rest of our session now. And in case anyone ends up uh, joining, inshallah, we'll have them uh, come on up and, uh, you know, share how they're feeling and how their experience was. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to invite Sheikh Obeidullah back to the stage, inshallah, uh, so we can go for the Q&A. Uh, Assalamu alaikum once again. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm back. Alhamdulillah. We just had the, the raffle. We got some winners. And now it's the Q&A. Um, I don't know if you got a chance to look through the comments, mashallah. If you didn't, I can share them with you. We, we haven't gotten any questions yet, but we have a lot of, uh, mashallah, comments about the lessons that you shared. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't looked through them, but anyone who said anything good, it was any, 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 any good is from Allah. And uh, I'm, um, you know, really thankful to, um, you know, be able to uh, serve and, and be present, you know, in this capacity. I mean, well, the comments said just that, you know, they, they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you immensely for all that you do mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. that you increased our iman through the lecture and that your time is greatly appreciated, <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> and, you know, they said, uh, you know, beautiful, beautiful lessons. Our sister said the intention of the believer to obey God forever in perpetuity. Thank you for that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you immensely and preserve you for the service uh, to his deen. And as well, more gems, you know, nothing can help you attain spiritual heights. You're looking for other than Allah when you're looking for other than Allah. You know, everyone has been uh, really appreciating uh, the gems you shared. And even from your sort of calf recitation, uh, the fact that you were able to contextualize it uh, so well for us. Uh, you know, someone said uh, it was an amazing talk. Jazakumallah khairan. And as well, uh, someone said such a beautiful exhortation, Shaykh Allah, I love Allah does not require perfection from us, but requires us to ask for forgiveness from him. May Allah reward you abundantly and preserve you for the service of his deen. Amen. 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 I know I see we don't have any questions. I mean, your lessons were, mashallah, very beautiful, very uh, you know, clear, really uh, touching. I don't know if there's anything else that... Uh, you want to share with us uh, for the remainder of the program, let us know. Um, I hadn't had anything in mind. Um, what, what are you, what, what have you been saying? What are you, what are you, what's on your mind these days? What are you thinking about? Um, it's hard, you know, when you're put on the spot, it's <laughs> <laughs> tell me about it. <laughs> Let's see audience bring in your questions. We are waiting. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, we, we looked at Surat al-Kaf and, and something that all, that I always think about in Surat al-Kaf is the story of uh, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and, and Khidr. And it's mm -hmm. such a, I feel like it's a story that no matter how much you try to dissect it or understand it, there are so many mysteries there. And uh, I don't yeah. know if you can uh, talk a little bit on that point, especially just uh, the idea of, you know, uh, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam not having the patience with certain knowledge and and where that leaves us you know that's kind of what i think about i think like mm. subhanallah like our prophet is here learning from someone who who has a different knowledge from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is her mm. his response how do we kind of react given our lack of knowledge our lack of you know awareness our lack of ma'rifa yeah no it's 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 uh, um i mean the story is is a riveting you know, and the thing about it, so much is covered mm -hmm. in just, you know, a page and a half, you know, of the of the Quran. But I think what's what what's important to remember is that Musa had, you know, direct knowledge from Allah, just like Khidr. Mm -hmm. And Khidr also had direct knowledge from Allah. It's just that what Khidr knew was different from what Musa knew. And, you know, many people say, you know, the prerequisite to growth is encountering something or someone that you don't know. 
And that if one is arrogant, if one, you know, mistakenly believes that they know everything, or they know everything that can be known, then of course they can't, they can't, they can't know uh, anything else, right? I mean, a very simple way of understanding is that, you know, uh, a glass of water that is already full cannot contain any more water. So if we are full, really of ourselves, but if we mm. deem ourselves full in our knowledge, that you know, I, you know, then you will never be able to learn anything new. And um, uh, you know, you know, you are um, young, essentially. Um, as well, I wouldn't say young, as if youth is like the goal, but mm. as long as you are still learning, you are still growing. Right, you are still uh, in a state of becoming. Right, you are not a finished product by any means or stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. And so, the story for me is symbolic of the humility that Musa was was made to learn, uh, because even though this was a messenger of God with direct knowledge from God, he still was in the state of becoming. He was still in the state of learning, growing, uh, coming into uh, understandings that had perhaps eluded him previously or that he had no knowledge of whatsoever previously. So what then for us, right? Um, who among us should say, you know, I know everything about this or I know everything about that or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I don't need anyone to tell me anything about this, mm -hmm. right? Um, that, that's one of the things that I think really sticks out from that story. The other um, thing that for me sticks out from that story is that we see things like this happen. We see, uh, you know, accidents, car accidents. Um, we see, uh, you know, planes crashing. We see those kinds of mishaps. We see children, uh, you know, uh, experiencing unfortunate, you know, circumstances. Uh, and then we see uh, acts of charity that we can't explain. Why would, why would somebody do anything like that? And we were just being given a glimpse in Soto to the Kaf behind the curtain, right? Mm -hmm. We know that God is the Musabib. He is the one causing everything to happen. He is the one not only kind of watching our existence, but authoring our existence. And in Kaf, we actually get to see behind the curtain to see some of the inner meanings to some of these things that we we might see and might think, why does this happen? Or why did anyone do that? Or what is there any meaning to this? And uh, many people say that these situations were not isolated. These were just the situations that Musa was privy to. Yeah. All everything has a reason. Everything is connected to some larger purpose in the way that Khidr uh, explained. The only thing is we don't have a Khidr to explain to us why this happened or that happened. Why did someone do this for me? What? But that, um, that, that, I guess, thread of meaning through our experience is always present. MashaAllah, there is, there's so much to unpack there, you know, with the story itself and with the explanation you just gave, we can have a whole Friday jam discussion on, on this alone. But, uh, you know, I'm really excited to say that actually our Umrah trip winner, Maher Hossein, has joined us backstage. So, Sheikh Abidullah, if you're okay, we'll invite him on stage and we'll see his reaction uh, about winning the trip. And let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see how it is. Salam alaikum, salam alaikum, Maher Hossein. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khairan wa barakallahu feekum. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. How are you feeling? You won a free Umrah oh. trip. I can't even begin to explain to you. Just I, like I'm at a loss for words, honestly. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. All glory, all praise, all credit is due to Allah, Lord of the world. I did not deserve this. Um, but here he is constantly with, with his gifts, with his mercy, with his barakah, with his ni'mah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we could never count them. 
And, you know, it's been, alhamdulillah, uh, an amazing past couple of years being able to team up with Celebrate Mercy and, uh, with these initiatives and being able to, regardless of the outcome, uh, be able to add to our scale, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa accept from us uh, you know, with these, these, um, these initiatives. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the team. Alhamdulillah, I can't, on this day of Friday, on this day of Jumu'ah, um, and it was subhanahu the Imam today, Imam Mahmoud at uh, Omar Haikul Masjid was honestly talking about, um, he was talking about Umrah and he was talking about Masjid Nabawi and, uh, you know, the, the responsibility upon the pilgrim to visit, uh, you know, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, at his grave and send salawat upon him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, just upon the, 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 I can't even... <laughs> Uh, subhanallah, just the, the, the grandeur of the feelings of being in the Haramain, you know. Um, so alhamdulillah, I just wanted to thank Celebrate Mercy, the team. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. This is an amazing, an amazing opportunity. I am so grateful. Thank thank God, alhamdulillah. Um, honestly, I, <laughs> it's a dream come true. Jazakumullah khair. Allah, Allah, mashallah. Beautiful, beautiful. What, what, what is there that can be said about that? That was beautiful. And I know this wasn't the first contest you participated in. How many contests have you been in so far that finally you got this, a mashallah, incredible, incredible prize? I honestly, I've lost track of how many. I just, whenever I could, I think I've only missed one or two, I think, uh, contests over the past, I think, two and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, so alhamdulillah, it's, you know, I haven't you know been on like the longest, you know, but alhamdulillah, you know, God is so merciful and, you know, I pray that he accepts Allah. from us our, our efforts. So it, it feels amazing. It feels great. Again, I don't deserve it, but, you know, Allah chooses whom he wills. Um, congratulations to the past winners and those to come, inshallah. Very honored, very grateful, very humbled um, to be a part of this. Um, very thankful. Thank you to the CM team. Thank you for, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase you in, in your in your uh, blessings and in your barakat and your rewards and uh, for for these kind of initiatives, you know what I mean? That regardless of those who are winning or not, these are deeds that we're competing in. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to compete, you know, or you believe compete in, in these in these good deeds, you know, compete in the good actions. And we, we've been competing this whole time and you know, inshallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it on our scales and that was the most important thing. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah. Dilo, we're so grateful to have you here and inshallah we're excited to see you in our next uh, celebrate mercy umrah trip jazakum allah khairan wa barakallah if you can see him i really appreciate you guys thank you inshallah jum'a mubarak jum'a mubarak assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Oh, that was so beautiful. Yeah, inshallah, man. That's, look, we are, we I, I, you, you got to review the contract. There's a clause in there. You can't Bring somebody on with a smile more beautiful, more beautiful than mine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll never do this program again. No, you know, he was an absolutely beautiful brother. And um, his spirit was uh, uh, just kind of leapt from the screen in terms of just the gratitude, the appreciation. Uh, I thought it was really interesting that, you know, apparently he was listening to the khatib today. Mm -hmm. And the khatib was talking about, you know, hajj and umrah and, uh, visiting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and sending salawat, you know, um, on him uh, at Masjid and Nebawi. So it was, uh, mashallah, it's just tremendous, man. You know, Celebrate Mercy does extremely beautiful um, work, you know, in, in helping Muslims to get closer to the legacy of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wassalam. Alhamdulillah, yeah, it was a beautiful sight to see. I basically teared up. It's just so, so nice to feel that energy and then see that energy. No, I agree. I agree. We'll I agree. Facilitate that, yeah. I agree. So we did have another question here, but we are um, getting close to the end of the period. I'll, I'll read you the question and maybe you can get started. You can answer as much as you can in the next couple of minutes. And if there's more to say, maybe we can continue the conversation on Clubhouse. Inshallah. Inshallah. Okay, so uh, the sister said that she's watching with her daughter, she said, and this is her daughter's question about reconciliation. How can you forgive someone who feels no remorse or regret about their own misdeeds towards you? I've tried to forgive, but can't. You know, that, that, that this is, um, yeah, I, I, I think that um, it's a very good question and a very important one. Um, if someone 
you know, forgiveness initially is something that is given to people who seek it. Um, but after some time, um, you're not really forgiving for them. You're really forgiving for yourself. You know, uh, holding a grudge is kind of like imbibing, you know, poison and expecting the other person to get sick. Um, you just want to let that go um, for your own sake. You know, it's not it's not so much for them, even if they don't, even if they don't, um, uh, even if they haven't sought your forgiveness. You are forgiving them spiritually. This doesn't mean that if there's a court case pending or there's some kind of real world redress of wrong taking place that you're you're uh, relinquishing that or giving that up. No, we're still going through with that. But on a on a spiritual level, I think that kind of forgiveness uh, also helps us to accept the the qadr of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that you know. This person wronging me was, um, I mean, I, I want I want the issue addressed. Um, but, you know, uh, I pray that, you know, God forgives them uh, for what they've done. Um, you will find great relief in that personally for yourself. Uh, has absolutely nothing to do with them. And, and Allah knows best. Oh, Jazakumullah uh, khairan for that answer, uh, Shaykh uh, Abaydullah. Inshallah, we'll uh, continue this conversation on Clubhouse. I'll just close off with a few announcements and then I'll, okay. I'll join you on there, Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. All right, so we were just listening to the uh, beautiful answers of Shaykh Abaydullah Evans, who will be joining us on Clubhouse shortly. So make sure to download Clubhouse, uh, the app on the App Store, and go to celebratemercy.com slash room, inshallah, and uh, join us there uh, for the continuation of the conversation. And as well, a reminder about our Share the Prophet wasallam, in Prisons campaign, uh, the endowment fund to print and distribute the books Shamal al Muhammadiya. Uh, in prisons to inmates, uh, we are 38% of our goal. Our goal is to uh, print another 2,000 copies and distribute them in the next couple of months. And this is an endowment fund. It's a WAP. So the goal is to really have, be, have this fund and be able to continuously uh, print and publish and distribute as much of these books as possible and uh, as is uh, requested. And there are many, many requests coming in. Uh, regularly, so you can really help uh, bring a light uh, to the darkness of, you know, the prisons and uh, spread the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by going to celebratemercy.com slash prisons and donating there, inshallah. And a reminder for our uh, Friday giveaway next week, this beautiful Ayatul Kursi calligraphy wall art. You can go to celebratemercy.com slash giveaway and enter. The deadline is next Thursday and we'll announce on next week's Friday Gems who won this beautiful calligraphy. And a reminder that in the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, uh, the Qurbanis that you ordered fed 10,000 refugees in Mecca. We raised over $25,000 for the Shamal books uh, to give to Muslims in prisons. Uh, 1,500 children registered for our first ever Hajj at home virtual kids camp and received the Hajj workbook that was made uh, you know, through the hard work of our dear sister, Danielle. And as well, we hosted our first virtual community iftar on uh, Zoom, which was a great experience to connect with the actual Celebrate Mercy audience. And we had 32 live webinars in these 10 days which were viewed for nearly 9,000 hours. If you enjoyed our programming in those blessed days, if you continue to enjoy our programming, consider supporting Celebrate Mercy. We run based on your donations as we are a nonprofit organization. So consider giving one time or monthly at celebratemercy.com slash donate, inshallah. 
So uh, this is the end of today's beautiful Friday gems, but it's not the end of our discussion with Sheikh Ubaidullah Evans. If you download Clubhouse right now and uh, go to the Celebrate Mercy room, celebratemercy.com slash room, you can join us to continue our conversation with Sheikh Ubaidullah Evans in Clubhouse now. I uh, hope to see you all uh, on there. Otherwise, see you next week for next week's Friday gems. I hope you all have a blessed Jum'ah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.